Hello, everybody. Today, I want to share a tool called Loopy. It is a computer modeling tool, and it is really simple. It's actually appropriate for students about fifth grade up to start making computer models to explain phenomena and show cause and effect relationships. Last week, I shared some resources on the science practice of modeling, and a lot of those resources focused on explanatory models. Explanatory models are a great place to start with modeling in your classroom. So this is where students are using diagrams and words to explain their thinking about a phenomenon. But as students get into secondary school, they should also be using computer models and using different types of models to make predictions. And so Loopy is a great introduction to that because it is so simple. So to get to Loopy, you go to ncase.me slash Loopy. There are examples already made in there. We're just going to make a model from scratch. So it's really simple. You can see there's only a couple of tools over here. I'm just going to grab the eraser and erase everything that's there. And then I'm going to start making a model. So there are different places you could um, use this. You could be adding a giving a model to students to help them start investigating a phenomenon. You could have students creating a model as a way to make sense of something. So maybe you give them some data or some text and they start creating a model as they're figuring out the relationships so that their model shows those relationships. They could also be using a model to make predictions. So as they're learning about something, maybe they make their model, they see what what um, predictions they their what their model predicts, and then maybe they start comparing that to real data and what we know is really going on to see how they need to go back and revise their model. So this for this example, I'm going to um, make a model that maybe I would give my students when we start learning about feedback loops, since this modeling tool focuses on cause and effect relationships, it's actually really great for feedback loops. So I'm going to make a really simple feedback loop that would um, I could give to my students in an earth science class when they're learning about feedback loops in the climate change standards. And so maybe this one, I have the amount of ice. And this factor is going to be the average temperature. and I'm going to make it a different color. And then I can think about starting amounts. So maybe I just start with an intermediate amount. Maybe I say I wanna start with a lot of ice. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw in some relationships. So I know that the amount of, or the average temperature affects the amount of ice. And I also know that the amount of ice affects the temperature. So the default is it puts these in as a positive correlation, but I know that both of these are actually negative correlations. So I'm just going to change them right here. And if one of these affects the other one more than the other, I can actually just add in other arrows. So if the temperature, if this is a bigger factor, I can actually add in more arrows and it will amplify this relationship over this one. So I'm just going to leave these for um, simplicity the same for right now. And then, so now my model is all done here. I'm gonna hit play. And this is where students could start um, looking at how these affect each other. So if they increase the temperature, you can see that yellow circle gets bigger. Um, the amount of ice decreases, which shouldn't be a surprise to high school students. This other piece though might be a little more surprising to them. So why would the amount of ice affect the average temperature? And I can actually change the amount of ice. What happens if there's a lot of ice? What ends up happening to the temperature? Um, and I can see it starting to decrease a little bit or Right. And so the longer it runs, the the lower the temperature gets. So maybe I give this to my students at the beginning and they start generating some questions about these relationships. Um, and then as they're learning about it, maybe I actually want them to revise this so I can actually send them a copy of it and they can start adding to it. So maybe I am going to ask them to actually type in the mechanisms for each of these. Why do these factors affect each other the way they do? Maybe I'm going to ask them to actually start adding in some other factors 
and other factors that might affect the amount of ice and put those in. So I can ask students to revise this and then maybe give it back to me. So if I want to send this to students, there are, a, I have a couple of different options. I could just save a link and give them the link. I could also embed it into my website. Um, and so this is exactly like we did for Concord a few weeks ago. So if I decide I just want to give this piece of the model to my students, they're going to generate some questions and then eventually they are going to make some revisions. I can click on this embed. I'm going to copy this embed code right here. And then when I go to edit my assignment in Canvas, I'm going to paste that code into the HTML side of the editor. And then my um, model will be right there. So they can play around with the model in Canvas. Um, they can also, when it's time for them to make their revisions, they can just hit this remix button and it will open up their own copy in Loopy. So this won't change your original. So then students can go ahead and start making their edits. Maybe you ask them to type in their mechanisms here and then they can go back and send you the link to their edited version. So I hope you have a chance to play around with this a little bit and maybe find somewhere in your own um, curriculum where this would fit and you can get students started with some computer modeling.